Is this the season they break their trophy hoodoo? Well, it might just be one man who's going to try and help them to do that is a newly acquired uh, Dutch defender, Mickey van de Ven, all six foot four and a half inches of him. I spoke to Mickey just before we came on air. And of course, he played the full game in Tottenham's win over Manchester United. And I put it to him, after that, do you begin to appreciate a bit more what this Premier League is all about? Yeah, of course, this was a top game and uh, against a top opponent. And the level of the yeah, and the rhythm and the level of the of the game was so so high. The first half, I was always every time I was like, Phew. you know, you, you know how it is in in the Bundesliga and how it is in Germany. And of course, it's also a really high level. But when you come here, you see everything is going a bit more faster. Players are more smart. They are more clever. Yeah. And after after the game, we won and the, with the fans and with everything around it. Yeah, I had an amazing feeling. It was an amazing atmosphere, wasn't it? I mean, you're playing alongside a World Cup winner in Christian Romero. It's early days, but what kind of partnership do you think you can get going with him? I think a really good partnership. We played now two games together and we, we find really well with each other on the pitch and off the pitch. So I think that also helps when you have a good relationship with someone off the pitch. And of course, what you say, he's a world-class player. He won the World Cup. I think that's a dream of, uh, of everyone. So yeah, he's a really good centre-back and I think I can learn a lot from him. He's quite an aggressive, robust player. Are you kind of the same? And might the two of you need to be careful on that one? No, he is really aggressive, to be honest. Yeah, sometimes he, he has some crazy slide tackles. It's always good, but I think that's more the Argentina blood or something. But I think he's a bit more aggressive than me. Listen, Mickey, a, a lot is being made at Spurs. Spurs the entertainers under Ange Postecoglou. But is there a fine balance, do you think, between success and failure in that system, in that effort to entertain? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Of course, there's a new, uh, there's this new manager. He has to bring his own vision of football and that's how we're going to play and everything will go well and we go develop, develop and every time it will go better. But of course, sometimes it will go down and you make some mistakes and I don't know, sometimes things can be happen. But yeah, that's, used to, uh, that's part of it. That's part of the plan. That's part of how we're going to play. So I think uh, afterwards, yeah, of course, we get better, better, better with what I told. Yeah, of course, there's some mistakes are going to happen, but yeah, we get used to it and I think it will be, will be very well at the end of the season. You probably know, Mickey, he did it his way at Celtic. They entertained and they won. They were serial winners. Maybe his way is the right way and, and Tottenham can, can benefit. Yeah, that's a possibility. I think how we play now and every player in the team loves the loves the way of play of him of, and the way he thinks about football. So I think there is a match now and uh, we feel each other and we know what he wants and we know what he expects from us. So we do what he wants and I think he also looks like how we think about it. So it's not only from one way but from both ways and I think that will help a team and a manager also to develop everyone. Who did you speak to when you decided to say yes to Tottenham and yes to Premier League football? I spoke with uh, with the with the manager. I think that's the most important part of the of to make your decision. Of course, you can talk with people from the club, like the director or something. But yeah, of course, he he's not going to train you on the pitch. It's the trainer who has to make you better, and you have to love his his style of playing, his the way of playing he he wants to play. Yeah, you have to love it because if you don't get the vibe or the feeling, yeah, this the system I want to play. Yeah, then it's not going to work. So I talked with the trainer. Uh, and yeah, everything uh, in the meeting went well and I loved the way of playing and I loved it how he was talking about football. So that also make, yeah, that make a really huge decision for me to go to Tottenham. What, what do you think of Postecoglou? What are your early impressions of Ange? Uh, he's a lovely guy. He is, he is so good for all of us. He's quiet, but he's straight in what he wants. Nah, not quiet, but he's straight in what he wants. Uh, he is clear. Everything is clear for everyone in the, in the dressing room and everyone in the team knows what he has to do and what he is expecting from us. He's a sweet guy. Uh, yeah, sweet guy, yeah. He's a lovely guy. But yeah, he's, he, what I told you, he's straight and he knows what he wants to be and what he expects from us. And his way of playing and the way, yeah, he has a good vibe with everyone, I think. He has a good relationship with everyone. And yeah, I think all of the team loves him and we feel like one family and I think that's really important. Mickey, good luck with Tottenham. Uh, it's a huge and a long season ahead, but I get the impression you're up for any challenge. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
what a good lad, Mickey Van de Ven. Um, I must admit, I didn't know much about him, Danny. I read up in him with the boys here and then had a decent chat with him there. And he's not short in confidence. Delightful attitude. He's just 22. Uh, and in he comes. And he feels that if he can get a partnership going with Romero, then the two of them could be effective. He, of course, I mean, he had 40-plus games with Wolfsburg in the Bundesliga. So at a young age, he's got a fair bit of experience in his belt. Well, I've only seen him two games. I've, I've seen both the Tottenham games, and he looks a real talent. He looks a really good sign. He's comfortable on the ball, which you expect. He's got big presence, so good aerially. But actually, he's quite quick for a big man. I mean, he can get about. Mm. Um, and if you are going to play, and I like Romero, I know he does the odd mad thing, but he's a good player. If he if he's focused, and I think it could be a really good pairing. They got, they had to go for someone like him, with the way Ange plays, because the fullbacks fly on. Fullbacks are gone. They go. They're going for it, Tottenham. There's going to be a great watch for Spurs, which fans. is great. Um, but they are gonna they are gonna get left isolated. Those two centre halves at times when Tottenham go for it. You know they left big spaces Saturday, but that's fine. That's the risk they're gonna take. So the way he's gonna play. So you have to be quick, and he's quick enough, and he's a real presence. But most importantly, really good on the ball. So um, they might have a gem here. It looks. Yeah. A, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's young, so he's gonna make some mistakes along the way. I don't think centre halves get to the best till a bit later but yeah he looks a really good signing really impressed with what him what do you so think far. Tottenham are capable of then we constantly ask it is this the season they win something you know what maybe they could win a cup yeah of course they could but top four is I think going to be a big ask for them just trying to replace the goals okay but I think you're going to get a much better style of football you're going to get a team that plays with some real energy and zip and I think the fans will enjoy it Hmm. But I think top four is a big ask. But winning something and the way Ange wants him to play, do these two things go together? Well, I think in a cup competition, if you play with no fear and you go after teams, you've got half a chance. But it's, it's like any cup run. You need a bit of luck in the draw. You need, a, you, know, you need a decision or two to go your way. But I like what I've seen. Yeah. I actually also think as well that Richarlish and some people jumping on the bandwagon too quickly on writing him off. You know, This is a guy who's got a bit about him. You don't, you know, Brazil number nine. You're getting the first team at Brazil. Everton, he got double figures, I think, three, maybe four seasons in a relegation battling team. He's got more about him than, than Tottenham fans have seen yet. Right. And I wouldn't write him off just, just yet. And I, and he's never going to score with the goals Kane scores. Nobody is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just stick with Ange and stick with the team and now and just try and enjoy it. Well, they're going to create chances for him. And he's going to get opportunities. So well, if, ever, if ever he felt that he was maligned yeah. or marginalised previously, I didn't much like his silly reaction coming off on Saturday and making a full-back play. No, he got him. over it quickly. He got over it quickly enough, but yeah. I, I think clearly he's a good enough player to do certain things. Um, but he's got to get hold of it. He's got to grasp the opportunity yes. now because he's got the number nine shirt. He's going to have a run at it. Yeah. And then if he doesn't do it, fine. Then, yeah, he's got to take, but, but now he's going to have a run. And I think, I think with the likes of Madison... Yeah, and so I'd like to see a bit more from Kulusevski. Simon, and I were talking yeah. earlier. I'm not sure he does enough for me. Do you know what? We really appreciate the love we're being shown today by the listeners. And here's another example of it, uh, Simon Lennon Crayford. Why isn't Danny? Why is he on the radio? Well, that's a question we ask a lot. <laughs> but is he not wasted on the radio? He knows more than Pep. Maybe surely, if a team wants to eclipse Manchester City. They'd take Danny on as a manager. Well, I don't know if there's any sarcasm Lennon in that message. Do you but, know um, Lennon Crayford? Do you know him well? No. Is this a personal friend? No. No. Well, but, you know. The coach, the coach, the coaching ambition was there, but it's that, that ship has sailed, I'm afraid. No ship has sailed. Mm. That ship is still in port, Danny. I could see you in the technical area <laughs> interviewing you afterwards. It's, as it, a fourth it, official. Danny, uh, my, coaching career is on, my coaching career is on the same ship as your TV career, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I didn't Clip that one up <laughs> on the rocks. I get it. I get it. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.